we're back out here once again. And today, we're talking about the surprising times and situations when how your bait smells to those bass might just be the most important factor when it comes to getting those big bites. Stick around, we're going to talk all about it. Got him. Ooh, that's another toad. Ooh, that's another one. Ooh, the, come on, buddy. There we go. Ooh, goodness gracious. Come on, buddy. Ooh. Oh, that's another nice fish. Ooh, come on. Ooh, you got a lot of fight in you. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations! If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing. And if you've been watching this channel recently, you know that I've been on sort of a smell kick, right? I've been experimenting with the way my bait smell and how it affects their performance. Now, I'm not talking about your sprays and the oils that you buy at Walmart or Academy or any of that, you know. Bass have a great sense of smell. And whether those products help you get bites or whether they're just catching you, I can't say. I don't know. I haven't tried enough of them to, you know, have an opinion on it one way or the other. But I do know that bass have an acute sense of smell. Studies have shown that it is the number one driving factor in a lot of situations that determine not just what they're eating, but their behavior and their patterns. How they set up, where they're going to spawn, what happens after they get released back into the water, after you catch them. How do they navigate back to where they were? Well, most of the time, believe it or not, they're using their sense of smell as their guide. I guess different parts of the water smell differently to them. That seems to make sense. So today I kind of wanted to touch on a surprising subject. And as we warm up, as a lot of the country comes out of that deep freeze, and here in Mississippi we're already back into the 70s and we're probably going to continue that upward trend until it gets unbearably hot by March, you know, sometime in that area. But as we start to warm up. Today was a perfect example because anglers were coming out of the woodwork. It was crowded out there today. Probably one of the nicest days of the year and there were a lot of anglers out there fishing. Now, today honestly was probably not what you would call an ideal fishing day. Now, why is that? Well, you know, it's beautiful, it was warm, it was sunny, but yesterday and the day before we got hammered again by freezing cold rain. And that rain dumped all into that lake. That ice cold water served to chill down the lake even more. And that's going to make those bass give them rocks jaw and it's going to make them go deep. It's going to make them stop what they're doing for a day or two until they get a chance to acclimate and reset. But today was probably not going to be the very best day that you could pick to go out on the lake and catch some bass. But for me, it was perfect because there were some things that I wanted to try, some points that I wanted to prove. Now, recently I did a video where I marinated some of my baits in some gulp juice, some of that stinky gulp juice, and it worked out quite well. We were able to show that marinating my baits like that, at least from what it showed, from what it looked like, had a positive effect. Now, Granted, we didn't test it over and over again. We didn't do a control. Other guys, as far as I know, haven't been following up. So we're not going to say it's scientific. But there was enough of a result for me to say that there was something beneficial there. A reason to keep doing it. So what did I do? Well, I kind of went over the edge, right? I made this. Probably the most disgusting thing I've ever made in my life. This is an amalgamation of fish, garlic, and some other ingredients, and it smells terrible. It smells absolutely terrible. But I wanted it to smell good to a bass. 
I wanted it to be loaded with amino acids because I'm told that's what they're looking for. Bass want to be able to smell those amino acids. That's what they're attracted to. Amino acids, that means something to eat. And that's what triggers a bass. So that's what I wanted in there. Plus, I also threw some garlic in there because everybody says that bass are always attracted to garlic. So I did some things like that in there. I put in some fish water, some fish meal, some other little odds and ends. And then I let my baits marinate in that for a while. You know, maybe not one of my better ideas, but I'm telling you what, it is potent. It is strong. But today was probably the absolute most perfect day that I could try something like that out. Because as I said, the lake was packed. It was pressured. And it's been getting pressured since the pre-spawn started. We've got guys that are coming out more and more and more and they're fishing every single day so we're back up to having a lot of pressure back on that lake and when we have a lot of pressure that can make it hard to catch those bass because at this point they've seen everything and i'm out there in my little plastic boat just drifting around and all day long there were other anglers all around me and some of them we're not giving me a whole lot of elbow room. We were packed out there pretty good today. And you know what? Nobody was catching fish except yours truly. And the only thing that I was able to catch fish on was that nasty stuff that I had pre-made. This nasty stuff that I had pre-mixed beforehand. This is the only thing that I was able to catch fish on. And I was doing it on a Nako rig. I actually have a nail in this so I took a wacky rig and made it into a NACO rig and this worm still stinks this is a June bug worm that I make myself regular gamakatsu hook you know the deal by now spinning combo 10 pound braid and then I've got an eight pound um, fluorocarbon leader on this it's probably about 10 feet long I like a longer leader for two reasons number one I feel like um, it works better with the bait, especially if there was fish or line shy. I don't want to give them any reason to see that braid. And number two is because I feel like it gives me a little bit better castability. I can work the bait just a little bit better. But anyway, that setup, I had a lipless crank tied on. I had a jerk bait tied on. I had several crank baits tied on. I had Texas rigs and jigs and all of the other things tied on. That NACO rig out deep was the only thing that I was able to catch fish on. And I was near other anglers all day. And I was the only one that I saw catch fish. As a matter of fact, one of the anglers in a boat that was next to me who saw me catch fish actually made a note of that saying, that's the first one that he'd seen anybody catch all day. All right, I have got this bag of disgusting junk that I've made. It's got chicken guts and fish bits and all kinds of different nastiness that I have mixed together into a nice puree and my baits have been soaking in it just straight soaking in it Ugh. bad idea this is probably a really bad idea but I'm going to try it anyway I just grabbed a, looks like a green pumpkin worm. These are some of my homemade worms. So, boy, that really does not have a pleasant aroma to it. Let me see if I can't wind this up just a little bit. Yeah, highly, highly potent. We want to see if it's soaking my worms in that nasty, disgusting juice is going to have any sort of benefit at all. So. We're going to get out here fishing. Oh my God, that smell. I may have overdone it with this one, kids. I may have actually overdone it with this one. That is making me some kind of nauseous. Ooh, boy, that's powerful. We'll see. The things I do, <laughs> the things I do for clicks. Ugh. You are still stinking it up. Got him. 
Don't hit the camera. That's not big, but it's a fish. He tapped at it. Come here, you. Huh. There we go. He's kind of losing his color. Look at that. Looks like he tried to come shallow and kind of went back out deep. See how he's kind of got that emerald iridescent pearl to him. All right, well, three-quarter pound bass right in that area. Not a huge bass. Thank you very much, buddy. We sure do appreciate it. All right, let's go get another one. There we go, I got him. Another one. Yeah, nice little one pound fish. Alright, so they're going after that worm. They're going after that stinky little worm. I right, appreciate it, dude. Thank you so much. Gorgeous little fish. And there he went. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's go get another one. What does this mean? Well, it means that under pressured situations, under times when those bass are super pressured and they're seeing the same thing, the same pieces of plastic over and over and over again, we need to have a way to stand out. And that could be scent. That's what I'm using right now. And the scent, well, that is what's working. That's where I'm getting those extra bites. Now, does it work all the time? Probably not. You know, sometimes there are times you can overdo it. Sometimes it's not going to be necessary. But some of the best times that you can use scent, well, you say, well, what about in low light conditions? Well, obviously, low light conditions are going to be a great time that scent is going to be the number one factor for your bait. But again, heavily pressured situations, that even more so because you've got to be able to convince those bass, hey, this is something worth biting. And if they're seeing rattle traps and bladed jigs and spinner baits and all these things go buzzing by their heads, well, eventually the reaction bite is going to die down as they key off on those things and realize it's just noise and they can tune it out. And that's why that bite dies down. But if there's something there that can pique their curiosity, something there that can initiate that curiosity or that feeding urge. So for me, scent is a great way to stand out on a pressured body of water whenever we really need to get a bite and we've got to stand out from other anglers. Now, I'm not saying that we should do it all the time because believe it or not, there is a chance, there is a risk that the bass will get attuned to that as well. Bass are alive. They have brains. They can tell. Just because it smells like food doesn't mean that it is food. You know, the one thing that they're never going to get attuned to is live bait. You've got guys who fish shiners, who fish shad, especially down in Florida, and that's fine. You know, I'm not knocking it. It's not my preferred way to fish. I prefer to use artificial lures, artificial baits to try to entice those fish. And I'm not saying one way is better than the other. There are a lot of skills and a lot of rigging to do that I just don't have the knowledge of when it comes to fishing with shad and shiner. You know, not the least of which is gathering that bait fish before you even head out or how to handle it, how to process it. So don't get me wrong. It's not the fact that I'm saying it's bad. It's just that it's not my preferred way of doing it. But live bait will always be live bait and fish are never going to be turned off by live bait. The trick is, like we talked about before, making bass think that something that isn't alive is food. So there you have it. Using sense and making your bait enticing in that manner can be one of the most effective ways to get those bass to pay attention to your baits on those super pressure days. Now, it's a surprising thing that hardly anybody ever thinks about doing, especially on a pressured body of water, usually we're thinking about it in other ways, but I'm telling you what, if you want to stand out and you want the bass to be attracted to you, well, 
Think about how your bait smells, not just how it looks and sounds. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.